Please welcome to the Slip and Dip Podcast. We're doing the Slip and Dip special two for the price of one. UFC heavyweight contender Greg Hardy and his stranger, trainer, friend of the show, my man Dean Thomas. Thanks for coming on, man. It's good having both of y'all at the same time. What up? How you living? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I, I, talk about just how y'all 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 started this like a couple years ago on Greg's journey and how y'all partnership has gotten y'all to this point where he's looked at more than just as a former football player. Go ahead, Greg. You go ahead and uh, answer that, <laughs> I'll, and oh, I'll tell him it's lying. Uh, <laughs> uh, nah, man. You know, it's it's it's, it's kind of like what everybody think, man. You know, I came in green, didn't know how to throw a punch and. Uh, everybody started working with me, man. I started kind of developing skills, and when I got to the point where I could actually throw a punch and knew how to move my feet without falling over, you know, coach came in and um, kind of taught me the finer details of the things, and is still teaching me the finer details of things, man. And I just kind of, I kind of, I kind of took to him. He kind of took to me, and we kind of just, you know, formed a, a great relationship, man. And just decided that we're gonna try to take over the world with. You know, he's a great dude, great coach, one of the best at it. So it's, it's kind of a no-brainer on my end, being being a rookie in the sport. So. Came 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 first, you know. Well, that and like when um when black people come in the top team, they automatically send them to me. <laughs> I don't know why, but I swear to God, it's like black guys when they come in. Conan's like, "Hey, Dean, he's yours." I'm like, "Why? Why is it?" It's like, <laughs> but it's the, kind of that way. So that's what how me and Greg get together. What are the odds? <laughs> What are the odds, Patty? What are the odds? <laughs> hey, man, no. Re- hey, listen, it's probably because uh, I don't speak no Spanish and it wouldn't have worked out anywhere with any other coaches. Yeah, that's kind of true. I, like, I speak English. No, but um, not real talk. You know, Greg is a, a phenomenal athlete and he's one of the easiest guys to coach. And it's always a pleasure to work with him because he's he's the type that he asks, he asks a lot of questions and he's he's always trying to get better. And he doesn't – and the fact that he is so green actually helps me because he doesn't have, like, these – he's not stuck in a lot of ways of bad habits. So he's willing to learn and try anything and try different things and experiment. And that's important for his development is for him to be able to experiment and, and see what works for him, see what doesn't work for him. And if it doesn't work, eliminate it. If it works, let's move with it. So we're, we're just – we're working all this stuff now, and it's – um. Hopefully on the 27th, we can see a lot of this stuff just come out. Hopefully not a lot of it. We just want to see some of it, the stuff that works, you know, just knock them out real quick and it'd be over. And then, you know, we can showcase the rest of the skills in other fights. For you, Greg, how good was it to go through some adversity last fight and show before the stoppage, but show like you can wrestle, you can get back up. Because people are like, oh, once he go down, what are we going to do? What is he going to do? And you should, you answer that bell. Man, just – Overall, last fight, looking at it, man, and me and Coach, you know, we sat down and watched the film of it just in retrospect. Hindsight, 50-50 being, being so, it was a hard fight for me, man, just because uh, I ain't a loser. And I, 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 hate that, I hate that kind of atmosphere. I hate that uh, I put Coach in that position. I hate I put the gym in that position, you know, because that's, that's just how I ride, man. I represent mine, and we winners out here, you know. But uh, going back and looking at it, breaking it down like a professional, man, I think – I think I did exactly what I wanted to do initially coming into the sport. I feel like I showcased the fact that I earned this, man. You know, like I, I got to a point to where I can't take it away. You know, me and Coach, we, we put in a lot of hours figuring stuff out, trying to uh, attack techniques and different stuff that, you know, came from a place of an uneducated, untechnical, you know, heavyweight, man. And that's that's that's, that's a hard thing for those who don't you know, understand that. And just to go out there and be able to be put in those positions immediately off rip and being able to keep composure, being able to make it through the rounds, you know, looking dog tired and then coming out and punching and actually getting to hear coach for the the first time. And it was, it was amazing for me and my, my self-esteem personally, man, it, it did a lot for me, but just, I feel like I accomplished one of my big goals and just letting people know, like I earned this man, like you're going to have to fight me to fight me. That's fair, man. That's fair. And I mean, obviously <clears throat> after the fact, you're going to have, you know, the people saying what they were saying. But, um, you know, how, how hard is it to, I guess, kind of shut out all of the all of the naysayers, all the critics, you know, even more so. Like, it seemed like they got they got what they wanted in a sense. Like, 
because you didn't get your hand raised, there was a lot of controversy and a lot of people were like, oh, that serves him right or whatever. You know, people say what they're going to say. So was it was it harder to kind of like keep that all to the side or was it just like, you know what, I'm just going to go back, you know, get, get with Coach Dean and, and see where see where we can improve and go from here? Not at all, man. I, I came from an environment to where you you on a silver platter every week. You know, NFL NFL fans, they're not quite as fickle as UFC fans, but the passion <laughs> that they <laughs> the passion that they have, man, is is ongoing. You know that when you're not their guy, you're not their guy, man. And I've not been their guy for a while. But in this sport, man, and, and in America in general, dude, we're 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 enamored. We're 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 brought in by the the bedazzling effect of a, a great athlete. Or a, tremendous, or a tremendous show or this, that, and the other. And I feel like um, that's what I can give them, man. I'm doing things and I'm creating things that nobody expected. And I think there are more fans out there that are asking the question, well, whoa, what can he really do? More so than, oh, I'm so glad he got knocked out, you know? And I feel like I got more feedback from that than I did from the bad guys, you know? Yeah, that's fair. I, yeah, but here's the thing, though, fellas, is that looking back at it, and we were, like I said, we were, Watched the fight, and I think that fight, it was a perfect fight for Greg at the time, to be honest with you. And I'm glad it happened right then and there because, you know, up until that point, here's a guy who, you know, he, he comes from a football background where he was totally dominant. And up until that point, he was in his fight career just totally dominant. And there was a lot of expectation, and a lot of people wanted to see him lose and get beat up. And that didn't happen. But he went through a lot of adversity and something that he needed in his career because. Fights don't get easier as you move forward. They get harder or, or they're going to be like that. And his next fight could be like that. But now he knows what it feels like. And he still didn't, you know, he may have, you know, got disqualified, but it wasn't like he got beat up. And that's all. And I never want to see my guys get beat up. But right, right. he got disqualified. That happened. We, we look past that. But he got a chance to, to feel that feeling, what it feels like to come out into a round and go, man, I'm dead tired. I don't know what I'm, I'm, I'm tired, but I still have a fight to, to fight. And um, I'm glad it happened. So now, you know, it, you know, when we're training, I go, hey, remember that feeling? You know, you know what it feels like. We got to get through this. So um, I think it's just going to make him a better fighter. Yeah, yeah coach, coach, coach has been saying for a while, man, I need the ring time. You know, and I, I finally, I, when I got in there, I was like, oh, this is what he was talking about. <laughs> this, this That's ring time, yeah. When you're going, when you're going out into the third round, and you can't, and your lungs are burning, and you can't feel your hands. That's ring time. You gotta know, you gotta know what that feels like, and be like, it ain't over yet. I gotta give five, five more minutes. I gotta do it. So, Dean, yeah. like we always hear, we always hear coaches and you know other fighters talk about that. Getting in there, like for the first time, it's like your energy is just zapped. Did you feel like Greg, like? may have kind of like you know misunderstood what it was actually going to be like when it <laughs> when things start to get that hard yeah i mean yeah go ahead let me, let me interrupt you <laughs> yeah, excuse my language hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> he told me exactly what it was going to be like because you know he's going to give you some pop political answers some coach try to make me i don't know if he's going to try to make it look good because he tell the truth but I tell you the real truth. He told me exactly what it was going to be like. He told me exactly what was going to happen. I was like, man, I've been here. I've been playing in front of 100,000 fans. I got this. <laughs> and then exactly what he said was going to happen, happened. All right, go ahead, Coach. I just want to say that. I want to be honest. <laughs> <You're real> honest. <laughs> it's tough because, you know, as a coach, you know, there's a lot more to coaching than just the physical aspect. Like, you got to make sure he goes in confident. And I can't let him go into a fight with Dallas thinking, hey, man, listen, this is going to be a tough fight. I never want him to think that. He has to experience that. But, um, but yeah, I think that happens. You know, it happens to not just, you know, it's not unique to Greg. It happens to most fighters because they go in with this expectation to just go and maul this guy. And it doesn't happen all the time. So you got to be prepared and be able to adapt to some adversity when it doesn't go the way that you expect it to. That, that leads me to my question. Uh, Greg, did, did, um, you watch uh, other fights, don't you? Like, just a, you're just a fan of the sport. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you see somebody like Dean, like the way he responded when Tyron went through his fight, how does that make you feel? Because, like, to me, you see how good a trainer really is when shit ain't going good. And, like, even if I didn't know Dean personally or nothing, I'd be like, that's the guy you need right there in your corner. He keep it to him 100. He told him everything he said was 100. So, as a fighter, how does that make you feel to know that that man's in your corner? 
It makes me feel great, man. And uh, you know, and I honestly, I feel like I'm a unique play, uh, fighter and player, and, and, and on the football field, and that's what made me special as a football player. I don't believe the hype, you know. And the reason I've been successful in my life and career is I listen to, my, I make sure that I have and find those people in my life, and I listen to them. And uh, the reason I've gotten as far as you know, I've been listening to Dean and um, trying to understand as much as I can, you know, as much as one can going forward and understand and apply those things, man. But like he said, until you, until you get in there, man, it's 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 hard to articulate, honestly. Especially, and I can see I can see where it could be difficult articulating to me because a person of my caliber, man, I've been under all this pressure, man. I've been bleeding. I didn't play with broken hands, broken feet. You know, like I, I'm a, I'm the Prince of War, baby. I've been going to war for a long time against 350 pound monsters with smiles on my face, man. I dance all football games, like you know. It's, I'm, I, people call me psychotic and all kinds of things, man. And you don't think with that kind of mindset and that kind of reputation walking into the cage that you're going to get zapped or when my man eyes goes back in his head, they're going to come back. Like, <laughs> you, you, just, you, can't, you can't plan for that, man. And when you got somebody that's going to sit you down on your bench and say, hey, calm down. Like, you know this was coming. Slow down, tells you what to do, and you've been listening the whole time. It starts to click, and I think that's what happened. You know, I, I felt better about the second round than I did the first, you know, honestly, because I came out, I was tired, but I heard what he said. I didn't just put it out my mind and be like, nah, fuck that. You know, it's, 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 it's a confidence that allows you to actually go back in. Because, man, I've seen a lot of guys, because like you said, I watch fights. I've seen a lot of guys not come back out the corner. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, and that helps you come out the corner like, all right, I know what's real. Give us some insight to your mindset, man. Because like when you when you look at when you like in that fighter mode, it's like, man, that I don't I don't know who stole that man's money, but I don't want to be that guy. You got that like that that fighter Debo version look on your face when you come to when you come to the ring. Hey, let me hey, hey let me tell you, man. I, I will say this though. Um, I couldn't imagine what it would be like in a football locker room with him because I know like being back with him in Brooklyn, it was the most tense feeling ever. Like his face was just like I mean, you knew he was ready to kill somebody. And I'm like, oh my god, and like, just like everything he does in the back is so intense. Like I couldn't imagine what it would be like in at a football environment. I don't. Is everybody that way in the back? Only the best of us, baby. <laughs> <laughs> only, only, only the boys that live for it. If you don't live for it, it ain't gonna happen for you like that. Hey, man, and yo, and just to add on to that, it's it's, it's a hard feeling because you know being in that football locker room. And in that mindset, I don't think about, hey, man, you wanted the best at this. You know, you've been you've, you've been getting in the football shape for 25 years. Like and then you go into a ring and you, you, you're you exerting all that energy. And somebody even told me, I don't know if it was coach, you coach. Somebody told me, he's like, you out there singing a song like you. You meant it, boy. You thought he, like you was Kevin Gates. I was like, no, nah, <laughs> no. Nah, nah. I, I watched it, but I was mad. I was like, oh, boy, you need to calm down. <laughs> And man, and you and you go and you go in there and realize like, oh man, where my energy go? And you don't you don't you don't add all that up until the end, man. And that's a big big deal, you know. Like, that's that's a perfect uh, what, what coach said. That's that's a better move. That's better than information, man. That everybody ain't getting, you know. Like that's top team Dean Thomas information. This is real. I think that's a, that's a kid folk mentality coming in because <laughs> you see because you see someone like oh um, like um. We've had um, Kevin um, Lee. He come out. He bucking the um, uh, T Grizzly, and he's Tell like, you. and he me, He's like, I call, we, I've calmed down with my younger years. So I'm like, you only 25. So what were you doing at 21? <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Lord, is he really only 25? I didn't know that. Maybe 26 now. He, he's young. He's young boy. Yeah, he's young. He's young. No doubt. So, so Dean, what's what's been the? Um, <clears throat> I guess you know, considering like I'm. Um, what Kendrick touched on earlier about, you know, I never actually got your reaction, at least speaking to you directly about how you had to handle that moment in there with Tyron. Oh. In, in between the rounds and like seeing uh, how that whole thing unfolded. Cause it, like, I mean, like we, moment. We've, had, we've had conversations, you know, like, like now. And then of course, like in the hotel where it's like, you give me the real stuff. So, I mean, you gave everybody the real stuff in between the rounds. When you, <laughs> you was like, you gonna let this man do this to you? You gonna not like this? Like you know, you you was getting in, like this. You you were getting in his ass, and I was just wondering, like, at, in between the rounds, between like, okay, I just gave him the message. He's going out there, still doing the same thing. Like, are you? How do you change the message, or like, what what's going through your mind, like, as that well, fight's playing out? It was weird because, like, I you know, I talked to him the first round. I knew he had lost it. I was just hoping he would forget about it. And then the second round. 
he didn't he didn't change anything. He came out still flat underperforming. And I said right before we went up, I said, all right, Duke, you go in, you talk to him. So Duke Rufus went in and talked to him. Then the third round was like, you know what? At this point, man, you know, I almost wanted to slap him. Y'all say, you know, keep it real. Like, I, I wanted to slap him. Like, and I've seen his face do that before. I was with him when he fought Rory McDonald, and it was the same expression out of him. Just this dead expression from him that he wasn't, he didn't want to be there. But for us, I'm like, dude, you, you got to you gotta move. You know, if you're going to go out, just get beat up, but you got to do something. But um, we, we didn't get that from him. And again, like I've seen it before. He did that when he fought Rory McDonald. He was like that when he fought Jake Shields. It's just every so often he come, he just doesn't show up to work. Unfortunately, he lost his belt from it. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. Crazy how, how it played out like that. But um, I don't, I don't see Greg ever having that moment <laughs> where it's like I don't see Greg ever having that moment where it's just like I'm not ready to show up and you know take this other man's head off. I think it, like that intensity is always going to be there. Am I, am I right? I will be fighting for my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm all the way messed up. <laughs> so, so, so what? 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 What if D slap you in between rounds? They're they gonna fire you up. <laughs> you, I man, you never know, big dog. I'm a whole kind of different animal, baby. And ain't no telling what's gonna happen once I get in condition. You know, I, I, I'm able to start listening to my coaches in the corner while I'm while I'm in the actual ring instead of on the bench, man. But football mentality, man, I think it uh, it expands my, my 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 capability and my and the possibilities for me in the sport. I would think that would kind of fall like right into your to your wheelhouse, like, from the football field. Because, like, you guys, like, on the sidelines, like, giving each other headbutts with helmets on. Sometimes one guy got the helmet on, the other one got, like, y'all just headbutting to each other. <laughs> hey, like, to you, to you, that seems crazy, but you wasn't there when I was banging that man's face out three days in a row, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, for yeah, 16 yeah. weeks. You know what I mean? That's light work. <laughs> That's not for, for, for us, it's motivation. But I've been, you know, I'll say I've been, I've been banging all week. And it's just, you know, I don't know, man. It's just in football, there is there's a, a air of war and, you know, the ethos of the man because we're not fighting for our lives. Like you could lose your life out there, man, but it's more so battle, man. When you in the octagon, baby, you really fighting for your life, man. You can lose it in there. Mm -hmm. Y'all fighting. So that, yeah. that's, you know, it's real. Greg's right about that. I mean, there's something different about the dynamic between the two because – you can – like, football, they can compare it to war, and it's a representation of war. But when you're in a fight, it's the actual war, and there's no team behind you. It's just mm -hmm. you and another guy, and both of you are ver essentially naked inside the cage. It's just you with shorts and gloves and another guy with shorts and gloves. You know, there's nothing you can hide behind. You can't hide behind a helmet. You can't hide behind your teammates. And – you know, and like I said, and it's just I'm so happy that Greg got to experience that last fight under those conditions that last time because now again now he knows what to expect. If it happens this time, no problem. We've been here before. It's no big deal. So in a weird way, do you think Greg, do you think going to that that a negativity is gonna help you be the the fighter you wanna be in the big picture, save two years from today? What do you mean negativity? Well going to that way? going to that experience with the with the legal knee being on that stage and everything I'm going to say getting out of hand, but not going as planned. The pleasure of being a high level, you know what I'm saying? I don't like to brag, but being a high level athlete is, that knee means nothing to me. That's a mistake. Mistakes are going to happen. Like, that's that's like saying you're going to go through life and uh, ain't nothing bad going to happen. Good luck, partner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. I, I, I think I'd have had six fights total. Like, if I got upset with myself about the knee, like I said, I got upset about the, it was the mistake that I got upset about and me understanding why I made the mistake. I was tired. Why was I tired? Because I did something that my coach told me I shouldn't do. Mm. You know, and those are those are my thoughts. Everybody else sees this, oh, he threw a knee, he sucks. That's why he feels bad. No, that's not it, you know? And when I look back on it, the, what's going to help me, it's not the negativity. It's the fact that I can break down that fight. I can articulate to myself and to my coach what went wrong, why it went wrong, break it down and fix it. That's yeah, why I mean, that's why really... If that if if he was up in two inches, that knee would have been legal. If Greg threw, like I wanted him to throw it to the chest. If he just threw that knee to the chest, my man would have my man might have dropped on that. So I mean, it wasn't that he threw the knee. I mean, it was just the fact that just a mental mistake. He was stressed from fatigue and threw it to the head just at the, a moment too soon. So inches, inches, man. 
so with that all with all that considered and you know your your next fight coming up is another co-main event slot and it seems like the ufc obviously like they got the rocket they want to strap it to your back right they just want you to go out there and get the dubs <laughs> yes so, sir <laughs> So, I mean, we've seen them do this in the past where it's like guys that they put a lot of a lot of stock in between or a lot of stock behind. Like, they're going to, like, you get a couple wins, like, they're going to push you up the ladder quick. So, you ready for that that jumping competition, like the, the former champions? Are you ready to face those type of guys, like, within the next year? Like, like let's say you go out, go out, get this win, get another one in the next couple months. Like, you could be looking at a former champion like you'd be standing across the cage from in a year's Come. time couple things you can say about that, man. One, I got the greatest coach in the world behind me. You know what I'm saying? I know Dean ain't going to let me go out there unprepared. And with that man behind me and my athletic ability, capability, and drive to work, I'm a dangerous man. <laughs> but, but but secondly, off rip, man, like, I just, I think a lot of people w- want to say, hey, look at Greg Hardy's past and don't want to look at Greg Hardy's past. Y'all ever seen The Blind Side, man? The movie Blind Side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my, my high school. Oh, I've been going against Mike Lohr my whole life. Oh, for real? Opposing teams, own teams, went to the same high school. I'm a three-time All-American. I played basketball for Ole Miss. I dunked on Al Horford. I rocked <laughs> on the ball four times. Yeah. I mean, I'm not done yet. I'm a pro bowler, all pro. Like, in every situation, man, I'm, I'm five seats in the back when I walk in the door, man. Like, I'm here. Like, I, I'm born for this. I'm made for this. If anybody was going to do it, I think I'm the man, you know? And outside of that, that truth that I just spit for you, I got work to do, but I just feel like in my mind at all times, if somebody's going to do it, I'm the man to do it. Like, and I just always keep an open mind. Like, it's not about what I think I can do to another man. It's about the willingness to put in the work. Like, there's no there's no amount of, of work that I'm not willing to do to be successful. And I think that's what it's going to come down to. What's more, more exhilarating feeling, sacking Tom Brady or knocking somebody out in the octagon? Knocking somebody out in the octagon. That feels so good. It's like a pillow. It's I, I can't ex- I can't explain it. If you didn't did it, you understand. <laughs> and then the crowd, and they love they love you. They love you so much. It's, yeah, it's, I, yo, it's crazy. It's like a drug, man. I love it. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine it's like what Dean was saying. It's like it's just you in there. Like there's no team. Like you get a sack in the NFL, but it's like you know there's eleven other guys on the field. Like and y'all are all like concealed in a way. When it's just, just you on that pedestal, it's a complete, completely different thing. I'm fighting for my shield. You know, I got that American top team on my shield. I got the Dean Thomas on my back. I got Billy Patton on my back, Daniel Jollies. I got these guys on my back. My shield on my front, man, it's real. You lose it, you either, you either come back with your shield or, you know what I'm saying, you go out on it. Like, in, in football, that's an expression. Here, it's real. Like, you get the glory. It's an amazing feeling, man. But so t- second time Brady's dope, though. Don't ever, don't ever, don't let me, don't, don't get that wrong. That's dope. Hey, that's, that's Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. And Sack and Cam. Like, those, those are top three. That's, those are the best feelings. You yeah, didn't Sack Cam, though, did you? Mm-hmm. Oh, I hit him. I call it a sack. Yeah, you practice. Threw <laughs> he threw it, but I hit him. So, it, it count for me. In my heart of hearts, he got sack. <laughs> he can't practice sacks. <laughs> oh, hey, listen. I, I'll get you sent home real quick. Even when you're a pro bowler, baby, you don't right. do that one. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you, can't, you, can't, <laughs> you can't Ricky Bobby the, the quarterback. <laughs> So, so Dean, like, what's the level of improvement we can expect out of Greg from the last fight to this one? Um, I mean, I don't know if you're looking for an exact number. Uh, I'm just, you know, there's a lot of, like, small little things that we've been working on to improve that are going to make a big difference. And, you know, and as long as, you know, if I can just kind of make sure he comes out with a clear head and kind of not – pull back that level of intensity, but just kind of monitor that level of intensity so that he's a little bit more clear-headed when he goes into the fight so he can make make a couple better decisions. Some of those things that we'll see. Again, like, I'm hoping for a quick early night. You know what I'm saying? So, like, we don't... I don't want to give you guys enough time to say, oh, man, he looks so much more improved. I don't want to give you that time. I want to just have him come out and do the things right, a few things right, and then the fight is over. If he comes out and does... Two or three, two or three things right. The fight is over right then and there, and that's what I'm hoping for. Oh yeah, very cool, very cool. Simple stuff, man. simple stuff. So yeah, I mean, I think that's what a lot of people are expecting as well. I mean, considering again, once again, getting that co-main slot against a guy that um, some people were kind of critical. I mean, people are always going to say 
it, people are going to say anything and everything. Like, who is this guy that he's fighting against? Why is he in the co-main slot? I think the only way you, you shut up all those critics, man, is going out there and get the job done in, in devastating fashion and continue to do it and just, you know, yeah. keep doing work. Yo, yeah, but truth. again, tell, yo, tell this guy even has more experience than Greg, so it doesn't, I mean, so people can say what they want, but this guy has more experience Same. than Greg. Like, people sure. don't realize that like, Greg doesn't have a lot of experience, yeah. right? For sure. Yeah. Tell the truth. Did you think I was going to get out of that crucifix? <laughs> you know, you know anybody that's been fighting two years is about to get out of a crucifix in a cold man event? Nah, I, I thought half like, oh, my man. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, come on, man. I'll be, we, honest, we, 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 I'll be honest with you. Since you asked for honesty, I, I, honestly, yeah. thought, I honestly thought you did. I thought you were going to. I, if anybody, that. There's, Shout very, out. there's very few athletes like you in the heavyweight division. So I was like, if anybody's going to power their way out of it or use, you know, decent technique to get out of it, it's going to be you. So I was about to say, hey, listen, and if you go back and look at it, Look, just watch my face, man. I was more calm on the ground than I was standing up. I didn't use any energy. I wasted all my energy punching, walking down the aisle, and spazzing out trying to be a tough guy. Like, again, everything my coach told me not to do. <laughs> right. yeah. but, you know what I mean? I didn't, that's what I take from it. You know, so I'm going in there. I'm fighting a guy that has eight, nine more fights than me, has five or ten more years of experience than me, and all I got to rely on is my athletic ability, man. You know, I just think everybody's looking at the wrong things. You know, it's gonna be a co-main event because I'm an athlete, because I did keep calm, because clearly there's more to me than everybody thinks. You know, nobody just walks out and be like, hey, I'm gonna get up a cruise fix today. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta have some level of competence. And on the other side, I think everybody's looking at like, oh, why is he, who is this guy? And it's like, man, this is a great athlete, but he's a rookie, man. This is a fight. These are two people trying to clean each other's clocks. Over 240, 45 pounds. Like, these are not little men. Like, this is entertainment. And the reason it's going to be good is because this man has experience. Yeah. Like, Alexander Overeem got knocked out in a couple seconds. Nobody was like, oh, man, that was a crap fight. You know, we were expecting these guys have been doing it forever. That was supposed to last three rounds. It's supposed to be great. Nah, man, it's entertainment. You saw two great athletes go to war. And what happened was what happens in fights. Somebody got knocked out because a very dangerous man came in doing the right thing. That's it. Right. And I think you know, if people focus on that, man, it's going to be one of the most entertaining things to come. Like when you when you start watching my fights. Yeah. <laughs> Final question for me, Greg. Now you get the nail on the head. What do you want people to know? Because we don't see this kid inside from you that often. You kind of like fight week. You just real mellow. You be in fight mode and you answer questions and you go about your business. What's, what do you want people to know about you? We don't see this fun, jovial side. I'm a super happy guy, man. I'm just real about my business. I'm one of the most dangerous people on earth. You know what I'm saying? And it ain't, and I'm going to say it, man, it's y'all show, but I'm going to say it. And it ain't got nothing to do with women. 350 pounds plus, I'm a dangerous man. You walk into that cage, it's a threat to your life, and I'm here to entertain at the same time. So it's going to be some good stuff. That's all I'm saying. You know, it's going to be fun interviews. We're going to have the best time in the world. You got the best entertainer in the world coming at you for four days in a row, and then you get to watch the Prince of War go to work. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> That's awesome. Best gym in the world, best coaches in the world, man. Like, yo, what, can, what more can you ask for? Yeah, you can't ask for much more, man. You can't really ask for much more, especially when it comes to the fight game, when you got guys that go out there and really lay it out on, on the line. And I think that's what we get from you every time. So I'm excited to see it. And like you said, you got one of the best coaches in the world in your corner. So you know Dean is going to bring the, the prime strategy. He might slap you around a little bit if you're not giving him what you want. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking. I'll, I believe it too. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying I want you to go out there and do something wrong, but I do want to see Dean slap you. <laughs> hey, now, I never. It's gonna happen. It's not as much as I want to. I'll never slap a fighter in a, in a fight. That's gonna happen by his opponent. Actually, if he doesn't do what I'm telling you, his opponent's gonna do it for me. So I don't. I don't <laughs> ever have to slap a fighter. <laughs> He's probably gonna do it's it for me. That's hilarious. Well, guys, we appreciate the time, man. We got to let y'all run. We appreciate it. We can't wait to see this fight go down. Um, man, it, it's, it's awesome talking to both of you guys, always. Greg, when you get your hand raised, can we get you on? Because when you ball, you're going to get that call. <laughs> My guy, I tell you, I can't wait, man. It's going to be a glorious event. I appreciate y'all having me on, man. Appreciate, appreciate your All time, right, man. Bro. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, fellas.